Hey everyone, and welcome to That Was History, where we talk about historical events that happened all throughout our past. When I say we talk about events that happened way back, I mean way back. We've actually got a great topic today that we want to discuss with you that happened just a few hundred years past the year zero mark. So don't go anywhere, don't miss out. We've got a lot of great other stories for you today. Be sure to check everything out. All right, let's get started, guys. World War II is said to be one of the most destructive conflicts in all of history. It cost more money, it damaged more property, it killed more people, and it caused many more global changes than any other war in the world. Well, during the war, there would be a meeting in the United States that would help out in the victory of the war. For the first time on February 9th of 1942, the Joint Chiefs of Staff would come together for this official meeting. The sole purpose for this meeting was to discuss military strategy that would ultimately help the Allies win the war. I'm pretty sure that the women in our audience can testify that one of their biggest fears is to have a child in a location that's less than desirable. Let me address the men for a second. If you will, just imagine for a second, just imagine that you are a woman giving birth on the side of a highway. Perhaps you're giving birth on a boat. Or better yet, perhaps you're giving birth to your child in a foreign country. Well, stuff like this has happened in the past before, and I'm pretty sure it's going to continue to happen in the future. You think it's bad now? Try being a parent prior to February 10th of 1855. Before this date, children who were born to Americans abroad were actually not considered citizens. There was a process to become one, but it was a big hassle. But thankfully, after February 10th of 1855, this wouldn't be the case anymore. On this date, the government agreed that if children were born abroad, but they had United States parents and they were citizens, then the children would be citizens themselves. This actually goes hand in hand with today's society because now you can get dual citizenship, which allows you to be a citizen wherever you were born, as well as be a citizen to America. Ready? Yeah, give me just a second. All right, I'm recording. You can go ahead. Henry the Eight loved his wife. What do you say? That doesn't sound like my script. Let me see my iPad. I didn't do it. You can check it, but I didn't. I didn't mess with it. <laughs> that's what I thought. Henry the Eighth wanted to divorce his wife, not love his wife. And that's why Henry the Eighth wasn't that great Let's of a king. Get this fixed so we can get started. Well, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, I'm about to break in their studios. Yeah, the guys from that was history. Yeah, I don't think they know who Hip Hughes is, but I'm not gonna put up with it. Now I'm gonna break in their studio, I'm gonna screw with their script. Yeah, yeah, no, I've activated their security system already on my phone. I gotta go, I'm gonna get caught out of here, hold on. All right, um, 1492. Ah! Ah, but suckers, I'm going in. So this is the studio. Thinking they're gonna mess with me. <laughs> if you don't like competition, where is it? I bet they have their script in here somewhere. Whoa! The doodle journal. Let's see what we got here, what we got here. This is it. It's coming up next week, February 11th. They're doing King Henry VIII, uh, Church of England. <laughs> Henry the Seventh. <laughs> See, they got Martin Luther, Martin Luther King, 95, th 97 thesis. And see, we got here Henry, uh, six wives, 16 wives. And uh, let's see, I'm going to add something cool at the end here. And at the end of his life, King Henry married the Catholic Church again and dissolved the Church of England. These guys are going down. Now look, it. I know that this is an important issue. I know that if you're studying world history, you need to understand that King Henry VIII is the one that fractured the ties with Rome, with the Pope, with the Catholic Church, creating the Church of England, putting himself as the head. And now I know these guys are going to go through the wives and um, Catherine of Aragon and, and, and Anne Boleyn and his sister and all this weird stuff that's going on. But at the end of the day, it's more than that. 
At the end of the day, it's really about creating England and Great Britain, right, as a sovereign nation, not being run by what they saw was as a prince. <laughs> the Pope acting a prince, involving himself in secular affairs, not religious affairs. So from now on, King Henry, he's going to go, he's going to build his navy, he's going to create a nation of nations. Yeah, that's what I got out of that, yeah. All right, well, these guys are going down. I love history, but I don't like competition. So I'm going to put this right in their script here. Make sure you subscribe to Hip Hughes History. www.youtube.com slash Hip Hughes. See how long these guys last. Uh, is that the po-po? I'm out of here. Today, divorce is more common act than it was back several years ago or even centuries ago. But there are just some people that just weren't meant to be together and they just want a way out. This is initially what prompted the annulment of King Henry VIII and Catherine of Aragon. In the Catholic Church, once you're married, you're married for life. It doesn't matter what you do. Even if by law you get divorced, the church won't recognize it. So King Henry wanted to separate from the Catholic Church so that he could get a divorce from Catherine so that he could marry another woman. On February 11th of 1531, he would be recognized as the supreme head of the church under an act of parliament. And the church would now be Catholic along with being reformed. When I say ancient China, most people think back to the days of the various dynasties and rulers, such as the Ming Dynasty, for example, and it seemed like for a while there were constantly battles and changes in which dynasty had control. On February 12th of 1912, the very last emperor of China, named here because, uh, trust me, my Chinese is terrible, was actually forced to step down following Sun Yat-sen's Republican Revolution. And fun fact, this would end 267 years of Manchu rule in China as well as 2,000 years of imperial rule. Many historians from around the world have questioned when and where the Bible was actually compiled and bundled. Put it simply for you, the Bible contains letters and documents, all from different writers throughout history, some of which date all the way back to the 2nd century or so. Well, on February 13th of 1955, Israel would purchase some of these precious manuscripts. In fact, they would buy four of the Dead Sea Scrolls written at different time periods. They bought these from the Syrians from what back then would have been a huge chunk of money for $250,000. And today, these scrolls are housed with many others in Jerusalem at the Shrine of the Book, which is a wing of the Israel Museum. February 14th, the Day of Love. I guess that's what people call it. Anyways, I'm sure you've already gone to the store and bought your significant other some candy, maybe a teddy bear, maybe some roses. Don't get me wrong, I like Valentine's Day, but we seem to get caught up in the commercialism of it all and forget what exactly we're celebrating. Well, maybe this will give you an idea. February 14th of approximately 270 AD is actually the marker for when this holiday began. This is actually the day that St. Valentine died, and not much is known about his significance or purpose other than that he is associated with courtly love since about the beginning of the Middle Ages. Have you ever thought about where the design for your national flag came from? Well, here in the United States, the theme for our flag is that there was a star for each of the states, and it was first sewn by Betsy Ross. But what if you're not in the United States? Well, wherever you might be in the world, there was someone that came up with the ideal design for your national flag. Well, on February 15th of 1965, Queen Elizabeth II of England proclaimed that the maple leaf would be the new symbol for the Canada flag. Following on this day, the new flag would be raised on Parliament Hill in Ottawa, which is Canada's capital. All right, guys. Well, that's going to do it for this episode. We hope that you enjoyed everything that we had. A special thanks to Keith Hughes from Hip Hughes History. We're going to have some links below so that you can go check out his channel. We really appreciate him coming on, and we hope that you enjoyed him as much as we did having him on our show. Please follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and also hit that subscribe button, because if it wasn't for our audience, we couldn't do this show.